Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to express the immense pleasure it gives me to welcome you all to the great city of Istanbul for the 79th biannual meeting of Europass, our last gathering of 2018. I would be, it would be difficult to surpass Istanbul as a setting of, for our event. A city steeped in history and one of the world's major metropolises, Istanbul is the only city in the world which stands upon two continents. While during the course of its history, it has been the capital of three major empires, the Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman. The city of Istanbul has its origins in the town of Byzantium, which was founded in 667 BCE. Coming within the Roman sphere of influence in the first century BCE, Byzantium was expanded by Emperor Septimius Severus in the early third century CE, while in 330 CE, after further expansion, it was inaugurated by the Constantine the Great as the new capital of the Roman Empire, being renamed Constantinople. During the Byzantine period, the city's Theodosian walls, built in the 5th century CE, with, withstood sieges by many people, including Arabs, Persians, Avars, Slavs, though the city finally fell to the Fourth Crusade in 1204, retaken by the Byzantine Greeks in 1261. The Byzantine period came to an end with the capture of the city by the Ottoman Turks under Sultan Mehmed II in 1453. Renamed Istanbul, it became the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Splendid mosques built in the Ottoman period crowned the hills of the old city. After World War I and the successful struggle for independence waged by Turkish forces under Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the Republic of Turkey was founded in 1923, with Ankara chosen as its new capital. Istanbul has continued to expand dramatically. Today, its population is around 15 million and continues to increase. It remains the commercial and cultural center of Turkey. While the city has been included in the World Heritage List of UNESCO with four major areas. Our 79th gathering in Istanbul also marks the 35th anniversary of foundation of IREPAS. In the early 1980s, Mr. Ricardo Higas created IREPAS to develop understanding between producers, traders, and consumers of rebar around the world. Today, IREPAS unites producers, traders, and raw material suppliers, as well as end users and also professionals from the shipping, finance, and inspection industries. IREPAS firmly believes that free and fair trade is one of the few unambiguously good principles and that is based upon on the idea of comparative advantage. Free and fair trade of commodities around the world allows resources to flow to their point of best use. Countries and companies that have embraced this message have thrived and prospered, whereas those that have tried to close themselves off from this trend have not. Competition increases efficiency and serves customers and the public in general. Europass always has and will always continue to support free and fair trade in steel. Unfortunately, we have entered a difficult period for world trade. We are very concerned by the recent developments triggered by the unilateral U.S. tariffs, which are unjustified and against the World Trade Organization rules and principles. There is no doubt that these measures are inspired by protectionism. The U.S. tariffs have triggered similar protectionist reactions from certain other countries, with some of the resulting measures previously unheard of in world trade. We all understand the overcapacity problem in our industry. However, many countries faced with such tariffs are not the source of the problem, but on the contrary, are equally hurt by it. Such countries have continuously to engage with the U.S. to jointly address the problem. However, it is, of course, very difficult to negotiate by under threat. Unfortunately, we see that such tariffs are now used as political weapon and to threaten other countries. In spite of such drastic developments, business sentiment in the market is still positive, though there have been fluctuations in certain areas due to ongoing instability. World steel production is up by 6%, though this situation needs to be monitored. If this country continues to be the case, 
for another year or so, we might experience disturbance in the supply and demand balance in certain areas. All the international business seems to be better, things may change quickly amid the current protectionist environment. The EU, EU has restricted import levels on, on 23 items compared to last year, which will push up prices, especially when remaining quotas are being used up. There is an obvious uncertainty due to the protectionism, which apparently sees no limits nowadays. What happened in Canada with retroactive duties against reinforcing bars, bar imports from Turkey is unheard of. The U.S. is apparently preparing new trade cases, and of course many other countries will follow the same path. This is counterproductive to all world trade. It is always encouraging for us that the IREPAS platform has provided major assistance to our industry during such rough times, helping to overcome a lot of the difficulties through the sense of community it has fostered. This conference always brings together opportunities for dialogue and for meeting with other colleagues from all over the world. Celebrating the 35th anniversary of Erebus this year, our conference is still working for greater convergence in the steel world. It is self-evident that if it is to be successful, any strategy for the improvement of our collaboration and our businesses requires the full involvement of all the members of our community. We have continued to expand as a community every time we get together, and our community can gain increased rigor depending on the extent and quality of our involvement in the process. I'd like to end my words by expressing my sincere wishes for the success of this conference, which is planned to be highly interactive as usual. You will have the opportunity to comment on and influence the discussions at all times. As always, you as participants are the most important element of the meeting, and you, your active involvement will be essential for the meeting to fulfill its mission. To all of you, thank you for being here. Welcome and enjoy the conference. Thank you.